Guru is our vision Sunday in service. Well, I now have the great honour of welcoming Pastor George as he continues his message. Glory, glory. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hey, 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 hey. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It's good to see everybody. It's good to see Catherine. And uh, I just want to thank God for my wife. God bless you. Amen. Uh, for being a blessing and for the Lord using you. How many are enjoying a uh, wedding counter? This is good. Wedding counter basically means to encounter the word of God. And I believe we're going to have many people sharing uh, wedding counter uh, as time goes on. Amen. How many excited to be here this morning? And how many are ready for the word of God? Thank you. I welcome the Facebook family also. May God bless you wherever you are watching us from. Uh, I can see lots of people are watching from different parts of the world. May God bless you. You are welcome in our midst. You are welcome here at Rise and Walk Church in Box Hill. Just welcome. We're going to all stand up and just welcome Jesus. Let's tell Jesus something good. Welcome him and uh, tell him something good. Just say something to him and just welcome him in your heart, in your mouth. Blessed Jesus, we welcome you in this house this morning. Hele la kuna hada mahara tanda malazuzia. Jege hande kende marubo. Ari hande nezezuya paka maharo. Dakande marande makanonadia. Lezo zuya nakamba brondo molodoza. Eli kando morozanda jakata maharos. Legimanda manda ramadezo soto maralaria. Ilindo, Ologondo, Sondo Malabadadias. Blessed Jesus. We welcome you this morning in this house. Fill this house with your glory. Thank you. Blessed Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. In the might holy name of Jesus. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Fill this house, Lord, with your presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? Bring it there. Because it's the currency is appearing. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Just put it there. there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lahando Lomaha Dizos. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we may take our seats and we are going to go right to the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. How many had a good week? Amen. Yeah, we had a good week. Any, any testimonies? Any, any testimonies from the Lord? Lots of testimonies. Uh, lots of testimonies. We're gonna, I'm going to give few people to testify before we go. Amen. Amen. We just want to hear what God is, is doing in our midst because the Lord is always doing something good. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jehovah God Almighty. Thank you for your message of grace. Now, how many are ready again? How many are ready for the word of God? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Now, we are going to continue with uh, we are going to continue with understanding your spiritual roots of salvation in Christ Jesus. I think this is uh, part five now. Amen. So, can we go to uh, Colossians chapter 3, starting from verse 1 up to 4. And then we are going to move to Colossians chapter 2. Lord, use me this morning to minister the word with understanding, with authority, and with power. Amen. Heal the blind sight. Open the deaf ear. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Heal cancer, oh God. Anybody. Heal HIV. In the name of Jesus. We give you reverence and honor. Deliver the bound. 
Miligra, Palamaso, Sons of Alaminaria, in the name of Jesus. We give you reverence and honor, mighty God. Heal the brokenhearted. Deliver the bound, deliver the captives this morning. In the name of Jesus, those that are watching us, in the name of Jesus, we give you reverence, we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. Hallelujah. Now, uh, what does Colossians chapter 3, verse 1? Yeah, I'm just going to go straight away in the word, and I know you are ready for the word. And I, had a, I had a very powerful dream on a Sunday, I think last week. I had a very powerful dream. Um, and this is how God speaks to me a lot of times, through dreams. I had a, a very powerful dream. Uh, in this dream, I was with somebody. I don't know this person. He looked like one of my friends in the dream. So in this dream, we were all seated. And the, the atmosphere was like we were waiting for Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus was coming back. So we were kind of seated. And we were basically doing what? We were sharing the word of God. We are just talking about the word. We are, and, and it was so evident in that dream. Like, you know, how, how many have been on a bus bus station or on a train or on the airport? You're waiting for your plane. Yeah. We are just like waiting for Jesus, just like he's going to be coming soon. Wow. And we were talking scriptures with my friend and uh, we were discussing just uh, scriptures around the word of God. And uh, when I woke up, I was very encouraged that I, I know that the Lord is speaking. And I believe the coming of the Lord could be any day. We don't know. The Bible says no one knows. So what are we going to do if Jesus can come anytime? The best thing we can do is to prepare ourselves for his coming. That's all. Yeah. I, I tell people, don't worry about his coming. Don't worry about anything. What you need to do is just to get ready. Actually, you don't get ready. You live ready. You don't get ready because getting ready ain't have time. Someday, you live ready anytime. Because the Bible says clearly that uh, somebody who is going to be, somebody who is going to be on the top of the roof when the coming of the Lord is nearer, huh? somebody who is going to be on the top of the roof is not going to have time to come down and get anything where from the house. The Bible says two will be together and one shall be carried away. So what that means is we don't get ready. We live ready. Your life is ready at any time. I'm mean, not ready for the coming of Jesus. There, there are times I say, oh Lord, come Jesus, even so. Which is Maranatha. Maranatha means, even so, come Lord Jesus. I'm just ready. I'm ready. Because sometimes when people are not ready for his coming, it's because we love the world more than we love Jesus. We love the world more than we love Jesus. Yes. We love the world more than we love Jesus. That's what it is. But I pray to the Lord, may God preserve you even to the coming of the Lord. Amen. That day when Jesus will be coming back, be there, be found on that number. Amen. The worst thing I can tell people is, I, I hear lots of things happening today. This one, maybe the other lady, she died with three kids that just two days ago. In Melbourne, she took her life. You know, taking your life is not an issue. It is the judgment that is going to come on you. The Bible talks about uh, it's appointed for a person to die once and then do what? Face judgment. But the thing is this. Uh, the most dangerous thing is when somebody dies not in the Lord. When you don't die in the Lord, your, your eternal destiny is very dangerous. Because whatever the word of God talks about is coming. When the Bible talks of hell, 
the lake of fire, those things are real. And the people they don't want to hear about it. I'd rather hear it now than get food. It is there. When you die, uh, uh, no one is going to help you get out of uh, hell or out of the lake of fire. And uh, I've heard about the suffering in hell. It is something we can't even talk about. The way people suffer in hell, you don't love it at all. You don't, there's no dying there. You try to die, you can't die. Anguish, pain, and groaning throughout all your time. That's why I cry to the Lord. I'm, I'm thinking like God, where would I have been if you never visited my life? Just even you, you can think about it. If you didn't have Jesus, where would you have been? Just think about it. If I never had Jesus, where could I have been? Where, where would I have been if I didn't have Jesus? These are some of the truths that we need to sometimes meditate upon. And we see the love of God. There are people right now, their hearts are so hardened that they can't come to Jesus. And some of them, they're going to die like that and they'll go to hell. But what about this love of God which has visited you and me? Hmm? Do we really think about that? It's a blessing to be a child of God. It's a huge, huge blessing to be a child of God. I cry every day. If Jesus, you never saved me. If Jesus, I never knew you. Where would I have been up to now? You know? So we must come back and start understanding this. Now, the Bible says in Colossians 3 verse 1, the Bible says, If ye then be risen with Christ Jesus, hmm. if ye then be risen with Christ Jesus, you know what that means? If you are risen with Jesus, what does that mean? Now, I want to explain this to you. Understanding your spiritual roots of salvation in Christ Jesus. I want you to understand this. When, when this is what happened, this is what happens. The, I'll go through again the scripture. If ye then be risen with Christ Jesus, seek those things which are above. Now, if you are risen with Jesus, what does that mean? What does that mean? Now, this is what happens. This is what it means. Before all of us here, before we came to Jesus, before all of us here, before Catherine, my wife, before everybody of us, we came to Jesus, before we gave our lives to Jesus, we were God's enemies. Did you know that? We are objects of God's wrath. You get what I'm saying? We were objects of God's wrath. We are not the destination. We were confused people. We are doomed for destruction. We are doomed for hell. We are not named to ourselves. That is before we came to Jesus. We are no hope. We are no life within us. That's the time before we come to Jesus. So what happens is, when you come to Jesus, something happens inside your life. There, death happens. There is death that happens when somebody gives their life to Jesus. What happens is, they die to themselves. You see what I'm saying? You die to yourself. And when you die to yourself, what, what happens? You rise in your life. So the old has gone, the new has done what? The new has come. You get the point? So when the Bible says, if ye then be risen with Christ. So anybody who is born again, you have risen with Jesus. You are, you are just like Jesus rose from the dead, you have also risen out of uh, the whole life. You have a new life. 
as a child of God. Do we get the point? So the Bible says here, if ye then be risen with Christ Jesus, do what? Seek those things which are where? Which are above. Seek those things which are above. What are those things? Seek the presence of God. Seek the love of God. Begin to seek the kingdom of God. Begin to seek the presence, the glory, the power of God. Begin to seek the holiness of God. Begin to seek the fear of God. If ye let me reason with Christ Jesus, seek those things which are above. Jesus is risen from what? From death. Where are you risen from? If Jesus is risen from death. Where are you risen from? You are risen from where? From death. Which death? Spiritual death. You, you died before, before you came to Jesus. You are dead spiritually. So when you come to Jesus, you become alive. You are risen from that death. You may be, people are physically walking, but they are dead spiritually. The only time you rise in new life with Christ Jesus is when you give your life to Jesus. When Adam sinned against God, he died spiritually, though he was physically okay during that. Because God told him, if you touch this, if you touch this, uh, if you touch this tree, you shall die. Did he die physically? No. But how did he die? He died spiritually. So that spiritual death is what brought a disconnection between God and the human being. So anybody who is born physically today, they are alienated, they are strangers to God, they are disconnected from God. They don't have the life of God in them. So when you come to Jesus, what happens is that the old life is crucified, the new life begins to live inside you. Now let's go to uh, Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Romans. How many are hearing the word? Yeah. Because oh, yeah. yeah. unless we do understand our spiritual roots, we can't appreciate the kingdom of God and the plan of God concerning our lives. What does the Bible say actually? Romans chapter 6 verse 1. It says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Should we? Should we continue in sin that God can have grace on me? The Bible says in verse 2, God forbid. So grace is not a passport to sin. Grace is divine empowerment to live above sin. So the Bible says, Shall we continue to sin so that grace may abound? Paul says, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer there are in? So when you come to Jesus, you become dead to the Adamic sin. To the sin that Adam committed. And, and, and what we are saying here is that uh, you never make mistakes. We, we, we fumble, we fall. But the sin that he's talking about it's the sin that is uh, the nature that Adam had when he fell off from God. You see? And also, uh, um, uh, the Bible says, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer? Because you are dead to sin, you are dead to that sin. How can you again live in sin? If you are living in sin, or else you are dead to that sin that Paul is talking about, then you need some help. I'll hear this. So, so now, the Bible says, verse 3, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Do you know, when you are baptized, how many have been baptized with water? So when you are baptized, you know what that means? You are being baptized in what? In the death of Jesus. 
Because he died for our redemption. So when you are being baptized, you are being baptized into the death of Jesus. Verse 4. So since we are all baptized into now, somebody might be saying, how, how can we be baptized in his death? <laughs> the Bible says so. <laughs> it is his death that brought life in my life. So the Bible says, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into what? Into death. I'm hearing this. Yes, sir. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead, by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in what? Newness of life. So when you come to Jesus, you have new life. You have risen from the dead. You are no longer yourself. The Bible says, the old have gone, behold, the new have come. You are a new person. In Christ Jesus. Let's go again to Colossians 3. Is this helping? Is this helping? Yes, Thank you, Jesus. And this is what it is. Every time you, you, you come through a life in your life, always rem remind yourself, I'm a new person in Christ Jesus. I can't live like this. I can't walk like this. I cannot talk like this. I cannot behave like this. Why? Because I'm risen with Christ Jesus. You see what I'm saying? And the Bible says, seek those things which are above. Seek those things which are above. You know, there are many reasons why if people are born again, and they are risen with Christ Jesus in a new life. The many reasons why they don't seek those things which are about. You know, you know many reasons. That there are many reasons why. Because when the Bible talks about seek those things which are about, those are heavenly treasures. Those are things like the glory of God, the praises of God, the anointing, God's mercy, God's power, God's fear. God's glory, the knowledge of God. The Bible is encouraging us. If we have risen together with Jesus, we must be seeking what? Those things which what? Which are above. If somebody is not seeking those things which are above, it's either because they do not want or number two, maybe they are double-minded. They are not fully for Jesus. They have, they have given their lives to Jesus, but they are yet to overcome the flesh, the appetite of this world. Are we hearing this? Yes, Seek those things which are above, where Christ is what? Is seated on the right hand of God. Seek those things which are above. Those things which are above. The other uh, portion of scripture says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And then everything you desire shall be added unto you. Matthew 6 33. Why is the Bible calling us to seek those things which are above? Why? Why? Why is God wanting us to seek those things which are above? Why is God wanting us to seek those things which are above? Why? Why? Why are we gonna seek those things which are above? Huh? Why? Why? There is a reason why. And that when you go into verse 2, the Bible says, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. The word affection there is love. Set your love on those things which are above, not on. You see, it keeps on talking about the same thing. There must be a reason why. You cannot fulfill destiny in a grand style 
If your focus is wrong, you cannot fulfill destiny in a grand style if your focus is wrong. You can never fulfill destiny in a grand style if your focus is wrong. You can't run your God ordained race on earth if your focus is wrong. You cannot please God if your focus is wrong. Are we hearing this? Set your affection, your love on things above, not on things on the earth. And the reason why things on the earth are temporal, while things above are eternal. Are we hearing this? Yes, sir. Okay, everybody of us have we wondered. How many of us here? How many of us here? Uh, when you die, how many of us are gonna go with your house in the grave? How many of us here we're gonna go with a car in the grave? How many of us we're gonna go with our clothing? Like the other man had about 200 shoes. The other lady I was watching the program. Now, all those things. You won't go with them because they are temporal. Anything temporal, it, it is valueless. It has no value. Are we hearing this? Yes, sir. Yeah. Anything temporal has got no eternal value. But anything that is not temporal has got eternal value. That's why the Bible says, look, uh, set your love on things above. Not things here on earth, because things on earth, they are temporal, they are bound to diminish. Are we hearing the word? Yes, they are bound to diminish. And the Bible says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Verse 5. Fornication and cleanness. Indominate affection, evil concupiscences, and covetousness, which is idolatry. So we gotta set ourselves on things above. Just to think about beauty of Jesus. To just come to a place in your life where you just wanna be dedicated to the Lord as never before. Are we hearing this? I think the, the, the best thing to ever do in every year when you are setting up your goals, set up your goals to seek those things which are above more than you seek those things which are on earth. Why? These things on earth are temporal. While things above are eternal. Are we hearing the word? Thank you, Jesus. We give you reverence and honor. We bless you, Holy One of Israel. There is no other God like you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We are grateful, Lord. Many times we don't understand the will of God in our lives. See, God's will at all times is for us to approach Him, to worship with Him every time. God's will is for us to have a convocation. God wants us to have a time with Him. He longs for that. This is why He created you and me. It was to have fellowship with Him. But you see, ever since Adam went missing out of the presence of God that day, God went down looking for Adam. The Bible says he went in the core of the day and he was saying, Adam, where are you? What have you done? Just that in itself is enough to show that God is after you and me. He wants the time you can give to him. God doesn't need nothing from you. All he needs is your commitment to him. All he needs is you to choose him above all things. He wants you to choose him above all things. All God wants is for you to give him time. 
Are we hearing the word? Yes, sir. Now, like we've been looking at, uh, we've been looking at all this time, we've been looking at, uh, what do we call it? We've been looking at uh, uh, the, the, the understanding the understanding your spiritual roots in Christ Jesus. Understanding your spiritual roots in Christ Jesus. Now we we did uh, we did one thing last week. We last week we talked about um, what are these spiritual roots. What are these spiritual roots? The first one we said your, your new birth, your salvation is one of the spiritual roots. You must need to know if you are saved or not, if you are born again or not. I, I used to have this man in our church. He's, every time you go for an altar call, he's there. I said, How many times do you want to be born again? He wanted to be born again, born again, again, and again. Somehow he didn't understand what it is to be saved. So you need to know. I'm a child of God. I'm born again. If I die today, I'm going to go to heaven. I'm hearing this. So new birth is that root. It's the first root in understanding your spiritual roots. New birth, you have to know you're born again. And you have to know what it is to be born again, to be served. And the second thing we talked about was your spiritual position. You have to know where you are seated in Christ Jesus, where you are seated, we are seated with Jesus, which is symbolic of authority. We have authority over every devil, over every demon. So you are not just a human being, you are a supernatural being. You have been promoted, you are seated with Jesus in heavenly places, far above every dominion of darkness. Are we hearing the word of God? And the third thing is your spiritual identity. Now, unless you begin to understand your identity, you will never go far in life as a child of God. I'm not just a human being. I may say, okay, when you call me human being, I'll never answer you and you think I'm rude. You know why? Because I'm not just a human being. Uh, I'm not just a human. Do I look a human being? No. <laughs> I'm not a human being. <laughs> you see, the, the, the reason why we have to understand our identity is because it, it, it gives us an upper hand in life. You have to know your roots of your identity. Who are you? Where did you come from? Are we hearing this? What did God say in Genesis 1, 27 and 26? 26 and 27. Genesis 20, chapter 1, verse 26. Let's just do 1, 26 and then we'll go to 27. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. That's verse 26 on its own. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Uh -huh. So, you and me, you were made in the image of God. Yeah. It is an insult to reduce yourself to just a human being. You've got some humanity in you, you have some human, huma yeah, but you are more than a human being. Because you were created and I was created in the image of God. And not only in the image of God, but in the likeness of God. Image means you look like God. Do you look like God from the outside? No. I look like God from the inside. Likeness is to function just like God functions. Did we get that? You are created in the image of God, also after his likeness, image from the inside, likeness functioning like God. Image, you look like God. Likeness, you function like God. When God speaks, things happen. So you as the child of God, when you speak, 
things have got to happen. That is your spiritual identity. Are we hearing this? It may look small, but it's big in the realm of the spirit. We were created to look like our Papa Jehovah. We were created to function like the most like God. We were created to reason like God. We were created to talk like God. We were created to behave like God. Are we hearing the word? That is our, our identity in Christ Jesus. I'm not going to bow down to anything that looks too stupid, no. Because that's not my realm. I know where I've come to. As a matter of fact, I'm risen together with Christ Jesus. I'm no longer in the dust. I've been elevated. The Bible says I'm seated together with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. Far above every dominion of darkness. So are you. You may look small. People may despise you. But you are very big inside more than you are outside. You may look very small outside. But you are a million times bigger from the inside than what you are outside. This is what it is. And the fourth, what do we call it? The fourth. So, so the first one is your spiritual identity. That's the, the third root. The fourth root is your spiritual existence. You know? Why are you existing? Why are you born again? What are you doing here on earth? Where did you come from? Uh, what is it that you are doing today? We're going to know these are our spiritual roots. But I'm going to go deeper next week. I'm just giving you a preamble. But I'm going to go a bit deeper more and more until we... I don't think I'm going to finish this because this is what the Lord wants us to understand. Because you have to know God's people. You have to know where you belong. Are we hearing this? I've been in meetings. I've been in meetings where I've seen the hand of God. Even in, in this place, if we can uh, get into the Word of God and exactly do what the Word of God is saying, our lives will never be the same again. Amen. Amen. Because sometimes people say, Lord, I want to see the miraculous and we want to see what God can do. But the Lord is doing it because He does everything by His Word. Amen. God is doing it by His Word. The Lord is doing it by his word. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm going to end here and uh, I'm gonna, we're going to be praying. Amen. amen. How many are blessed to, to have heard the word? Uh, amen. amen. So we're going to continue. I want to encourage you, God's people, uh, when you go back home, go through these scriptures, these teachings. And as you go down, the Lord is going to open more light. More light to start coming. More light to start coming. More light to start shedding. The Lord will be shedding more light. Amen. Yeah, just go. Today when you go, get a Bible, put it on the table. Every time after you finish dinner, because no, no one is going to ever have time on earth. The earth is too busy. We are not designed to have time on earth. Ever since Adam fell off, the earth is in a rush. The earth is panicking. So no one is ever going to have time. So you don't normally have time. You create time. Time is not something you, you have. It's something you create. And the reason why you create time is because what you are creating time for matters. So if God matters to you and me, I'm going to create time. And it has to come first. Now, when we talk of tithing, I may know that tithing, it is not just tithing money. Tithing is a lot. Tithing, because what tithing means that we don't own anything here on earth. If anybody thought, this is my grace, I'm a liar. Just start thinking about that. No one owns anything here. Ooh, we, we don't own anything. We don't own anything. Everything belongs to God. Including time belongs to God. So now, out of everything that God has, all God has said, give me one-tenth of it. Tithe. 
One tenth means tithe. Or ten, tithe means one tenth. So, so we are all of us here. We are thieves. Because I'm gonna tell you, sir. We don't give God two hours, forty minutes per day. No. But did we realize that twenty-four hours belong to God? Yeah. And it requires us to give Him one tenth of everything. I'm hearing this. One tenth of everything belongs to God. Even the 200 shoes that somebody has, one tenth, don't think that they are yours. They belong to God. And once we begin to develop that mentality, and now, now, now the reason why I'm saying this is because of this. It's because of uh, uh, when we begin to understand this, it's going to help us understand that we don't own anything. Everything belongs to God. The Bible says the earth and the fullness that are of are the Lord's. What do you own yourself? What do you have? Nothing. The reason why we can say we don't own nothing is when you die, you, you go with nothing. Because what you thought you had was not yours. So everything we have does not belong to us. So we need to understand this. Anything you have, think of giving God one tenth, even time. Oh no, I'm too busy, I don't have time. No, I can tell you some. If we do understand that uh, God gave us 24 hours in which to labor, on which to work, at least two hours, 40 minutes belong to Him. We're going to spend time with Him. Now what tithing does is honoring God. You're honoring God with everything you got. You're acknowledging God that you gave this to me. I'm therefore giving you honor and I'm obeying you by doing this. Amen. So I want to encourage you, God's people. It's very important. This word of God is going to be preached across the whole parts of the earth oh, yes. until the end shall come. Amen. Amen. Now let's stand up and just uh, bless the name of God. I'm going to call my wife. To come and uh, just uh, release us the word of prayer. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. I just want to cover you in the blood in this week. I want you to lift up your hands. Blessed Jesus, I cover your people in your holy blood. Amen. I cover them, the Lord Jehovah. You go with them. Amen. You bless them beyond measure in the name of Jesus. Visit their lives. I cover them in the blood of Jesus. Amen. I speak the dominion of the blood. Amen. I release angels of God in their direction. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We give you reverence. We give you all the praise. The power, the glory, and the honor. Amen. And to Jesus be the glory Amen. forever and ever. Amen. 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 God bless you, uh, Facebook family. We love you. And be blessed. And I'm going to call my wife. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Thank you, Pastor George, and thank you, God, for this sermon today. I leave you with a priestly blessing found in Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you Amen. and give you peace. Amen. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for our time with you here this morning. As Pastor George encourages, Lord, help us to give you one-tenth of everything, Amen. including our time. Amen. Lord, we thank you that you are ever-loving and ever-forgiving. Lord, may we bring ourselves to prioritize you this week in our lives every day. Amen. And we thank you for the message and the time that you've given us this morning. We pray for all those who don't know you. And we thank you that we are your children. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go forth and be blessed, church. Amen and amen. amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah.